everyone, this video is primarily done for my students who were not able to participate in our online class this morning. My subject or our subject is human growth and development. And I know you have a vast, a vast knowledge as regards this but one because you had this when you were younger. But the main focus of our subject will be on the recent researches about human growth and development and their possible implications to our own field of specialization. That is why there is a need to revisit the basic concepts and issues of human development. But you know, um, there is also a need to differentiate these two things, though many people tend to make use of these two terms interchangeably to mean the same thing. But in reality, these two words are quite different and they have many differences that you could ever imagine. First of which is that when we speak of growth, it mainly focuses on the quantitative improvement while development is associated with both quantitative and qualitative. Let's try to have growth first. Growth is focusing on the quantitative. It's quantitative simply because the changes that is happening in a person is being measured and it can be seen by the naked eye. So like if the child grows, basically there is a change in size, or in shape, or even in height. This person becomes taller, or this person becomes bigger. It's growth because it can be seen, it can be measured. However, development is associated with qualitative and that of quantitative improvement. An example would be the improvement in the cognitive ability of a child. Okay, The changes in the child's mental ability can never be seen at a glance, can never be understood at a glance. Right? But this change, this qualitative change, the change in the cognitive ability becomes quantitative or can be quantified if the person is subjected to comprehensive evaluative tool, like that of the IQ level. The changes in the IQ is one qualitative, but once the person finds out the IQ level of this child, this cognitive ability then or the IQ level then becomes quantitative. Next, growth takes place within a limited scope of time while development takes place within a vast scope of time. So in growth, there is a limited scope in time. For instance, a girl stops getting taller when he or when she reaches 14 to or 15 years old. Okay? And it's expected that this girl becomes fully developed and becomes a woman at the age of 25. But for men, Boys would stop uh, growing at the age of 16 and become fully developed at the age of 18. Okay, so there is basically a limited uh, scope of time. At, after 18, wala nang development. After 25, wala nang masyado nangyayang growth. But development, on the other hand, takes place within a vast scope of time. So there is development from conception to death. Okay, even at old age, at the age of 50, the person still develops. The person still learns a lot of things. Kaya nga dito lumabas yung pinatawag nila ang the wisdom of the old. As you grow older, you tend to be wiser. As you grow older and experience vast plethora of experiences, then you tend to be uh, knowledgeable as regards dealing with complexities of life. Another thing, growth is dependent of cellular changes while development is dependent on organizational transformation. So as your cell grows, as your cell changes, okay, cell is in the body uh, changes, that is actually being reflected in your physical attributes. But in the development, it's dependent on the organizational transformation. An example would be uh, arithmetic and reading are actually... Um, uh, science of development, okay? And this, the skill once learned, one learns from reading and arithmetic, dadalhin niya yun hanggang pagtanda niya until such time that this person is in the mature uh, or in the right age, he or she already knows how to deal with life complexities or more complex um, activities about reading and about com uh, computation. Another, growth is associated with progressive physical change from one stage to another, 
But on the other hand, development is the gradual transformation of behavioral and skill set changes. So like what I said a while back, when we speak of growth, we are only referring to the physical change, okay? The changes in the physical attributes. But development, on the other hand, it's the transformation of the behavioral and skill and skills. So it's more of the, the changes from within. You tend to be more matured. You tend to, to adopt the necessary skills needed as you grow older. You tend to understand uh, the complexities of life. You tend to be transformed from an ordinary person into a into a matured one, like that of the, the butterfly that is being transformed into a caterpillar. So like butterfly, for humans, we also metamorphose, right? And that metamorph metamorphosis for humans uh, is actually called development. And lastly, growth focuses on one aspect of your child's life. In one aspect per se, and that is the physical aspect. While development focuses on the several aspects, actually all aspects of one's personality that will start from the emotional state, from the intelligent, intellectual capacity, interpersonal skills, and the other skills needed for this person to survive. So if growth is only limited to physical change, then development will take charge of the rest, okay? So there is development that is happening if the person becomes more emotionally stable, if the person becomes more um, intellectually, um, more, 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 as I, okay, I would like to repeat, the person becomes more emotionally stable, and then he becomes more intelligent, and he shows a uh, very good skill when it comes to dealing with other people, and at the same time, I would like to insert, he would show good skill when it comes to dealing to his own self, okay? So if things like those are done by the person, then that person really is showing very good development. Okay, and there are actually two processes of development, one of which is um, the growth or evolution, and at the same time, atrophy or the evolution. The growth or the evolution, I would like to claim, um, is the positive form of development. So you grow, you evolve from, um, from a baby to an adult, you become more intelligent, you become more capable, but atrophy, on the other hand, is the opposite of evolution, okay? Many researchers would claim that um, growth and evolution actually um, is happening in the earlier years of life, but involution or atrophy is happening in the latter stages of life. So, dito sa atrophy, kaya min minsan meron tayong tinataw tinatawag na mga atrophic, mga, atro mga disease that they call it atro uh, atrophic for that matter. Ito yung mga panahon that our body, even our mental state, is beginning to decline. Kaya nga yung mga old ones, like those who are already retiring at the age of 60, hindi na nila ginagawa yung mga usual na ginagawa nila, they are the ones who usually experience involution. Everything declines. Their mental state declines. Their health also declines. Even um, their physical attributes um, also decline. So, ito yung kabaliktaran ng growth or ng evolution na pinatawa. So, basically, development could either be positive or could either be negative. Next, how about learning? How do we define learning? Okay, learning is the aspect of development that connotes modification of behavior. And these changes in behavior is the result of practice and of experience. This is what I always tell my students in the undergrad. We can only claim that the students learn something if they are showing different behavior, if they are showing good behavior. So we cannot claim, for instance, pumasok ka sa klase, uh, ng June, magugulo ang mga estudyante mo, March na, magugulo pa rin sila. So you can never claim that there is learning that took place because we can only claim that learning took place if you can see changes in behavior. So pag nung una, medyo basto sila or medyo hindi sila maayos at nung March na naging refined sila, naging okay na sila, then you congratulate yourself as a teacher meaning you did the right thing. 
Okay, now let's look into the meaning then of human development based on these uh, the definitions given. It's the pattern of movement or change that usually begins at conception and continues through the lifespan. That's why it's a lifelong process. Development is a lifelong process. And it includes as well growth. That's why we mentioned the term evolution. And it also includes decline. That's why we have the term um, atrophy. It could be positive and it could be negative at the same time. Okay. Now let's look into the various aspects of development. This is self-explanatory because we have mentioned many of these a while back. So these are the aspects of development, the physical, intellectual, personality, social, moral development, and that of the spiritual development. I remember when I discussed um, Mock Scholar's hierarchy of values, the apex of all the aspects of development is actually the spiritual development. Okay? And I think as Christians and as practicing Catholics, we also have to make sure that um, we have we must have all these aspects of development and the most important thing would be this last the spiritual development. Alright. And there are also two approaches to human development. The first of which is the traditional approach, and the second one is the lifespan approach. So marami ring mga researchers, researchers ang nagtatalo sa kung ano nga ba ang better approach when it comes to human growth and development. Is it traditional approach or is it the lifespan approach? Now let's try to differentiate. When we speak of traditional approach, we are referring to the extensive. The changes are extensive from birth to adolescence, adolescence, but no change at all in the adulthood. And then eventually, at old age, this change declines. So, naniniwala sila na um, nag-grow lang or nag-develop lang ang isang tao at an early stage of life hanggang the period of maturity or period of adolescence. And then, mag-i-stop na doon. No development, no growth that will happen after that. Pero mag-decline na siya kapag old age na. Okay? Pero, ang sinabi naman ng lifespan approach, hindi yun totoo. It actually negates. Uh, the traditional approach to human development because the lifespan approach claims that development takes place even in adulthood as it does during the childhood, which is actually true, right? Development does not stop. Development development is a continuous process. Another, these, uh, I would like to present the different characteristics of human development for lifespan perspective according to Paul Baltus. Sabi niya, development is lifelong. Okay, it doesn't stop somewhere. It's a continuous process. You develop from birth to death. Okay? And he also said that development is plastic. And he defined plasticity as the potential for change. Meaning, development is plastic. That's why it's lifelong. Because there's always a potential for change. Everyone has a potential for for change. Parang hindi rin dapat iisa ang tingin natin sa tao. Pwede, uh, because a person really, the person really changes, right? Because development is possible all throughout the lifespan. Next, development is multidimensional. It, because it, it, it's multidimensional because it consists of biological, cognitive, and social-emotional dimensions. And I think I mentioned this, that, that one a while back. Okay? Development as well is contextual. That success here, individuals are changing beings in a changing world. Usually, the development that we have is reflective of the kind of society we belong to. So, it's contextual because um, your development and even your growth um, are actually being influenced by the kind of environment you have and by the kind of nature Okay, next. Development involves growth, involves maintenance, and it also involves regeneration. So those are um, the different uh, qualities of development according to Paul Baltics. Now, let's move on to the common biological processes in development. It says their development is relatively orderly. Okay, it's a step-by-step -step process. 
um, it's systematic, it's organized. That's why we have the term proximal distal pattern of development and that of cephalopodal pattern of development at the same time. Here in the proximal distal pattern of development, kailangang aralin mo muna yung uno mong dapat ma ma maaral before you could move on to a more complex task. So for a baby, the baby learns how to sit first and then eventually he learns how to crawl, how to walk, and how to run. Same is true with the cognitive ability development. The, the, the child learns how to speak first, and then eventually he learns how to, uh, to listen first and to speak and to read and to, to write at the same time. It's always a process. It's very orderly. And cephalocodal pattern, on the other hand, is the growth always starts from top to bottom. So you have to develop the head first down to the other parts of your body, okay? In your CLMS account, I actually have given you a research word about researches on proximal distal pattern of development and at the same time, cephalocodal pattern of development. I would like to study these two terms and answer the different exercises provided for you. Just feel free to navigate your CLMS accounts, okay? And next, development takes place gradually. So, uh, the biological processes, there should be change in the physical characteristics. There should also be changes in the individual's intelligence and the use of the language. And at the same time, there should also be changes in individual relationships with people, uh, changes in his emotion, and at the same time, changes in his own personality. So, there, was, there should be a gradual change in all these processes that you have. Now, these are the different principles of growth and development. So, we have differentiation and integration. Um, the, the, the explanation of this one is actually provided in your CLMS account. There must be developmental direction. Um, early foundations are critical. This is really true because there are a lot of studies which would tell us that if the child uh, was not being developed at the early stage of his life, then it's expected that he will not be coming, he will not be the person that the site expects him to be in the future. So there is really a need that, uh, you know, that the kids must be taught the proper way at an early stage of their lives. Okay? And now when it comes to teaching, I always tell this to my students, the best ones really must be elementary teachers. So if you think you are good, then you should become an elementary teacher because you are setting the foundation. You are teaching them the foundation, which is very critical for the kind to the kind of person they will become in the future. Next, all individuals are different. Okay? All individuals are different. Uh, we are all unique in our own ways. That's why it's not good that you compare someone. You compare your child to someone else. It's not also good that you want to, that you compare one class to the other class because all of us are totally different. There are people who blooms um, in the latter stages of their lives. There are people who blooms at an early stage of their lives. So, yun, iba-iba ang ating, um, iba-iba ang ating growth, iba-iba din ang ating development. We shine at our own time like the flowers bloom in its own time. Kaya nga, uh, Ah, yun, yun lang pala yun. Okay, next. We also have each phase of development has characteristics, of course. And each phase of development, it has characteristics and at the same time, it has hazards. Okay? Development is aided by stimulation and that growth is unique. That's why comparison is a big no -no. And lastly, there are social expectations for every stage of development. Ito ang medyo mahirap kasi minsan um, yung expectations ng tao sa atin ay mas mataas sa kung ano ang kaya natin gawin. Like for teachers, di ba, the people expect the people expect a lot of things from teachers. Okay? Na for kay teacher ka, dapat you must be bogus, you must be good, you must be like this, you must be perfect, you must not be committing any mistakes. You know, these are social expectations. But, yeah, uh, we have to accept the fact that there are social expectations, but I would like to suggest that we should not be pressured, you know, to meet all these expectations 
and we should not be pressured to 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 please just to please other people because the most important thing naman is tayo that we know ourselves more than they do okay and lastly the various aspects of development are integrated they are all interconnected intertwined uh, one stage is connected to the other stage one uh, development is connected to the rest okay so um now these are the issues i would like to present though i will not be discussing this one in total because um, it's your job to conduct researches about these issues in development. Maraming mga researchers nagtardak na ng mga studies about these issues, but up to this time, they can never prov provide conclusive statements about these different issues. Una, ito yung lagi natin uh, na naririnig, nature versus nurture, ano nga ba ang mas influential sa development natin, yung nature ba natin, or yung biological inheritance, or yung genes ba natin, or the nurture, or the environment where we live in. Okay? Ano nga pa ang mas matimbang? Ano nga ba ang mas influential? The next one, continuity versus discontinuity, does development involve gradual, cumulative changes, or distinct changes? And lastly, Stability versus change is development best described as stability or involving change. And like what I said, I would like you to visit your CLM as account, okay? And I would like you to answer the questions provided there about these different issues of development. And it's up to you to decide. I think yeah, I have given you one particular uh, video to watch, a video from YouTube to watch. Now, we'd like you to study that one and answer the questions provided about issues on development. But nonetheless, uh, both genes and environment are necessary to a person's growth and development. Okay, and this ends my presentation about the concepts and issues about human growth and development. See you next time.